What's up? I'm Brian Tong, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, Google is making moves, and they're putting the heat on Apple after their announcements from the Google I.O. conference in San Francisco this past week. Now, Google rolled out their music beta cloud service that will be directly competing with Apple's yet-to-be-released one. You'll be able to upload up to 20,000 songs, scan from your computer and iTunes, and access them from any Android device or your computer. Google also announced movie rentals on the Android marketplace for streaming or downloading. They'll start at $1.99, and like iTunes, you can keep it for 30 days, but once you press play, you'll have 24 hours to watch it. They're also getting into cloud-based computing with their Chromebooks that start as low as $349. Everything is stored on the cloud. There's not even a desktop background, but don't confuse these with netbooks. This is a new class of laptop geared for business and student use that will still have appeal to specific consumers. Now, the Android platform is building a legitimate multimedia offering. Android's global market share recently surpassed iOS, and there's new kick-butt phones coming soon like the HTC Sensation and the current Thunderbolt and Samsung Infuse. All I'm saying is that the big A better bring it at WWDC 2011. Now, you probably won't see this at WWDC, but if you're looking for more evidence that a Nano with the camera exists, a new picture shows the backside of the alleged next-gen Nano with a spot for a rumored 1.3 megapixel camera, and it sports no clip. Now, patently, Apple also posted a new patent application for the Nano that covers the presence of a camera feature and dynamic screensavers. It also points to the Nano as a fashion accessory. So forget about using it as a watch like this guy. The current Nano broke through fashion barriers like no other product before it. And the next big thing in technosexual fashion will be the Nano necklace. Oh, you wait, you will see. Now, in other Apple patents, if you're hoping to see a second dock connector in the iPad 3 or the iPad 3D, depending on what you guys read, the Cupertino kids were granted a design patent for the landscape dock connector as well. And since we're on the topic of iPads, let's go to the emails where we asked for your thoughts about a potential iPad 3D. Now, Chris writes in, I am definitely down for an iPad 3D. Movies like Tron Legacy and Avatar would look awesome in 3D on the iPad. Games could also benefit from the 3D feature. You're right, Chris. It could look awesome, but I like my big screen 3D if I'm watching it at all. Now, David has other ideas. He writes, I think I would use it on CNET to see Apple Byte in 3D so I can look at Brian's tags on the back of his shirt to see where he gets them from so I can go buy some. Oh, yeah. Fashion. Now, several of you guys wrote in about watching this show in 3D, but remember, we showed you what might happen. Come on. Gross. Actually, there are plenty of you that might like that. Okay, all right, uh, back to the stories, guys. Apple recently decided to think different at their Beijing China store when the Big A decided to release the iPad 2 and the white iPhone 4 at the same time. And guess what? It was a total disaster. Now, an iPad scalper who was trying to cut in line got into a scuffle with security guards. The pushing then sparked shoving matches with other lemmings, I mean, sorry, people in line, which then caused Apple to shut the front doors. But it didn't end there after angry customers surged to the entrance and started shaking the extremely tall glass front door until it broke loose and shattered. Two words for you, bad Apple. Bad on Apple, bad on those naughty door shakers, but more importantly, did you guys get an iPad too? Well, it was clearly worth it to them after a new survey now ranks Apple as the world's most valuable brand worth an estimated $153 billion, beating out companies like Coca-Cola, BMW, Disney, who's heard of them, and last year's number one, Google. All right, on to the quick bites. Apple TV gets a software update to 4.2.2. You'll get audio and video improvements, plus better performance when fast forwarding or rewinding live events. Also, Adobe has released their suite of apps on the iPad to complement Photoshop CS5. Adobe Easel for five bucks is a finger paint program that allows you to send pics directly to CS5 from any location. Adobe Nav lets you view your Photoshop file on the iPad, customize the toolbar, and access them on the iPad. It's two bucks. And Adobe Color Lava lets you mix colors and create your own swatches on the tablet for use in Photoshop for $3. And finally, Netflix is adding captioning to movies in the Netflix app for the iPad, iPod Touch, and iPhone. This is a great addition because not all movies have this feature, but if they do, you'll see a little voice balloon icon to turn them on. 
All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send me your emails to theapplebyte at cnet.com. We'll answer them. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week for another Bite of the Apple. Thank <laughs> you.